Mr. Adani was on this trip. Um, they went to Queensland. So you believe it raises questions? Well, there are questions to be answered. Nalan Kohli, how would you respond well, to I'm that? Because it's a, for Mr. Yeah, group. Like as a, politi as a from political SBI. party. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm not speaking for Mr. Adani's group. I'm not speaking for SBI. But certainly, as the political party which is in power, I find the entire approach highly presumptive. I find it absolutely strange. People invest in the stock market, lose money. So should they stop investing in the stock market? People go swimming, they drown. So should they stop swimming? So in the same way, there are good investments, there are bad investments. If an investment turns bad, there is every right to look at it. How can you presume it before even the money is given at an in-principle level to immediately say that this is not a good decision? So are we going to therefore stop looking at any economic activity in this country? Even a house loan or a car loan can go bad at the lowest level. So it's only a difference of scale. Somebody is capable of taking a 1 lakh rupee loan. Somebody is capable of taking a 1,000 crore loan. Now within this country, virtually every group picks up good projects. They lose projects. We are making a presumption here. Now what they are pointing out, and I, that's what, I, what I'm saying is that to immediately then, and that's the point I want to make strongly, to link it to Mr. Modi, to link it to the Australia visit and therefore say it raises questions, sure it's an Australia visit, it would be showcased, but to say that Mr. Modi facilitated it or even allude to that, I think that's incorrect and not fair. Mihir, you want to take that, uh, to respond to that? Is, 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 that, is, that, is, is, is that argument a bit of a stretch? I think it's a little Because bit he's a legitimate businessman and he has legitimate he's businesses. He's a completely legitimate businessman. This happens to be the um, a loan that uh, three international banks have turned down and exited out. Three others have declared that they're uninterested in. It's a project that um, nobody else is willing to finance. And it so happens that India's largest state-owned bank, uh, the chairman of whom was on well, the with once the again, the facts are wrong, this and I think we are giving wrong this, facts on facts the national channel to the viewers. Sir, you should have denied them earlier. Can I, can I interrupt? No, let, just let him finish his point, and then I'll uh, come to you, Mr. Desai. Yeah. So the point I think we have denied certain facts already earlier. No, I, I'll, come back, I'll come back to you, Mr. Desai. Just give me a moment. Yeah. So the point being that definitely there is an element of, um, there are questions to be asked when a, when a loan that has been not been available from anyone but India's largest state owned bank is given, is granted okay. by India's largest state owned bank. Nali, 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 I'm not even. I think uh, a, as a newspaper or as a channel, everyone's in their legitimate rights to ask questions. I mean, that cannot be taken. That's the job of the media. That's not, not a fight at all. The point is about making a presumption or arriving at a conclusion. My fight is with that. Now, let's go one by one. Re newspapers will, in their own wisdom, take an editorial call to publish a story or not to publish a story. Is there right? The same will apply to a bank, the same will apply to a corporate board, the same will apply to a government, a non-governmental organization, everyone. You have, to, you can't make a presumption under anything that this is malafide or driven by a intent which is not correct. I think one of That's the, my point. the questions are being asked, Guru Charan Das, is that it's probably the largest loan an Indian bank is giving to an overseas project, possibly one of the largest. And because there are questions raised, for instance, about the financial viability of this project, the, uh, the issues that they're dealing with environmentally in Australia, those have not been resolved. The wide reports about other banks, as Mihir pointed out, apparently not, you know, being interested in this. Maybe that's why those questions are coming up. Why this project? How would you respond? Because you were shaking your head. Yeah, when I mean, I speaking. find this, this debate bizarre. I find his point bizarre. I find your point a bit bizarre. Frankly, the question is, in a free democracy, why should we be debating a loan given by a bank to a company? In America, would you be debating if Citibank gave a loan to Apple? In the, so let's go to the root of the disease. The root of the disease lies in the fact that we, 70% of our banking system is unfree. It belongs to the public sector. This is, one of the, this is one of the terrible legacies of Indira Gandhi's period, which was one of the worst periods in our economic history. And so, I personally think that let's sit back for a minute. Let's not worry about this loan. There should be loans, and he's, a, he's right, that it's a loan between a bank. Why, why did the state bank share price go up as a result? Obviously, the shareholders think that it's a pretty good deal. But the reason about you know, this smell of crony capitalism that you are uh, talking about is because the government controls the bank. And the government's 
Only in communist countries do government control bank. In free democracies, they don't. And so I think this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity for us to really ask ourselves that, you know, this, that is this, I mean, frankly, uh, Arvind Kejriwal and Mr. Um, uh, the CAG guy, Vinod Rai, these guys have built reputations on anti-corruption. But none of them have suggested what is the solution, what is the real, that you have to make an institutional change. That as long as government Even owns... You seem to agree in, with that. I mean, on, the, on the fundamentals are Absolutely. That. The fundamentals are that you have, the government has too many, too much control over our banking sector. That under the last government that led um, the State Bank of India to 5.7% bad loans. Yeah. And a lot of that was the product of politically, politically connected lending. So one fears that this is not over yet. But I, 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 just, I just wanted to Mr. Divakar Gupta in as a former uh, MD and, and, and uh, CFO of State Bank of India. Mr. Gupta, you would be listening with great interest to, the, uh, to this entire debate at the moment. How do you see it? I mean, do you think uh, it's a little unfair uh, for, the, for the critics to be going after the SBI on this? Um, would you concede that there is political pressure from time to time or there has been in the past? you know, to, to give loans, or is it completely a professional, transparent process? What would you tell us? Well, let me, let me uh, tell you, Nidhi, how proposals develop. You have a client. That client says that he has to bid for a large project, but the people who would possibly award that project to him would like to know whether he has the wherewithal to fund it. And therefore, he comes to the bank or to a consortium of banks and says, look, here is something I want to acquire for $5 million or whatever, and I need to show that I will have the muscle to raise the money should the deal come my way. Now, if the bank has been dealing with that client for 25 years and the client does not have a poor record with the bank, the bank has no problem in giving that letter because that letter only says that, well, yes, we are in principle agreeable to giving you this loan subject to due diligence, viability, techno-economic feasibility, and closure of uh, funding. So today, just to say that the state bank has given this loan itself is not correct. It is nowhere close to giving it. Now let's come to uh, uh, what Mr. Gursarin Das was saying, whether it's because of the public sector nature that governments in, uh, hold influence. No. I have been on the board for four years in the bank. I can tell you that as the process runs, there is no way the government can interfere and tell the bank to sanction or not sanction a particular loan. The way the process runs is that the proposal comes up. It comes up from the uh, related branch through different committees to what we call the Central Office Credit Committee that does not have the chairman on the, on the committee. And this committee can jolly well say that we don't accept this proposal or we are not in favor of this proposal. Decisions are by consensus. If one member says that he is not in agreement, the proposal does not go through. So the proposal goes up to the board only when this committee, of which the chairman is not a member, recommends a proposal. So I think I can say this with conviction and with, you know, my hand over my heart, that there is no political interference which forces banks to give okay. uh, loans, okay. not state banks. I, I so take Mr. Das, he's putting his hand on his heart. Yeah. Yes, and I, no you know, I, I, I have great sympathies for you. The State Bank of India is an iconic institution. It's been a good performer. But please explain why the NPAs of our public sector banks are five times greater mm. than